All right, so today we're gonna to be covering how you can take a physical order form and digitize it into a work management software called SmartSuite. Essentially, taking your pen and paper forms for collecting those customer work orders and turning it into an easy to use software purposefully built for your team by you with no coding required. Because here at Process Driven, we have helped thousands of teams set up their work management software and turn processes that used to be manual for their small team into something that's automated, repeatable and efficient. But one thing I've noticed from the teams that succeed versus the teams that don't is the teams that really succeed with systemization don't just do the steps. They truly believe in the value of doing the steps because they know why it matters. So before we go into what land of what do I do and when, let's talk about why this matters. Well, I'll give you two reasons. First, physical work orders are really easy to create, but they're really hard to retrieve information from. So when you write down that physical order, it might feel really convenient in the moment, but when you're trying to read that order later and your handwriting is bad, or you spill coffee on it, or you forgot to ask a question, or, 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 the risk of that work order getting completely lost over time is really high. And I don't think it needs to be said that this could lead to some confusion on the team, mistakes in the work product, or even missing an order because a work order fell off of your desk and oh no, where did it go? No one knows, no one remembers, it's gone forever. Now, usually that first reason people already know. They're like, yeah, physical stuff's a little dangerous, I get it. But the second reason to consider the solution I'm talking about here is because when people try to digitize, they tend to overcomplicate. They try to get the dedicated software just for their industry, perfect for their work orders, and they end up shelling out hundreds of dollars every month for this fancy piece of software that they use just a small fraction of. And not only is this expensive software usually so rigid that it doesn't suit how your team actually works, it's often the same software that everyone in your industry is using. So when you're sending out quotes or you're collecting those work orders, you look identical to your competitors, which kind of hurts your chances at having a competitive advantage or seeming special in some way. So that's why the approach we're going to go through today is about building out your own work order management software around the way that you actually work. So you can reflect the way that your business conducts itself offline and make a digital experience that's just as unique and for a fraction of the cost of that fancy software. Or at least that's what I recently told family what I suggested to them that they actually implement the exact same software I'm gonna to show to you for their small team in the family business. Just like many of you perhaps, they were purely working with pen and paper forms for all of their orders. And when customers would come in, it would go on a piece of paper. And when the customer order went out, it would all be on a piece of paper. And overall, this system worked. There's nothing wrong with pen and paper, but as the family business has grown, the problems that I just described were starting to be experienced by the team. Things were missed, things were uh, confused, pricing got off because the quantity seemed different, handwriting wasn't understood, all of the classic symptoms were happening in this business. So I recommended to my family, hey, try out this software, which is what I'm gonna show you as well. But when I made that recommendation, I got feedback, probably like the feedback you got from your team, that went something like, can we finally replace our written work orders? And meanwhile, my parents were saying, oh my gosh, just tell me that we don't have to get rid of our written work orders. Probably like your team, the family business I was working with had a mixed bag of some people who were super excited to digitize and others who were a little skeptical. But as we got further along, everybody started seeing what was possible and we got everybody on board, which kind of caused a new problem. My phone started blowing up with questions. Wait, if this can manage our customer orders, can it also manage our other projects? Yes, it can. And is there a way that our biggest customers could log in and self-manage their recurring orders? Again, yes, they can. And my personal favorite, is there a way I can get SmartSuite in a dark mode? The answer is not really, but there is a workaround I'll share in this video if you stay till the end. And so, so, so many more questions that I will be answering in this video. Seriously, the enthusiasm was really cute, but I was starting to wonder if it was acceptable to block my sister's phone number. I don't know if that would be rude. <laughs> she might watch this video. Maybe I shouldn't say that. <laughs> nah, it's fine. She'll get a joke. So anyway, before my phone completely blew... Again, before my phone blows up with even more messages, let's just say a quick thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Softer and SmartSuite, which are the two tools we're gonna be using to solve this pain point. Hopefully this tutorial will answer so many questions that both you and my family don't need to blow up my phone in order. Okay, this is, ah, ooh, there's a new homegrown episode. Okay, what was I doing? Ah, filming this video. Okay, so 
phone distractions to the side. These are the three major parts we're going to be covering in this video to make this more realistic and more relatable, I hope. Let's pretend that I am a property management company. I serve landlords. I help them manage their properties. And I really want to keep track of work orders that come in. And I also want to allow the landlords that are my clients to manage their subscription, billing and payments with me. I'm looking to organize all of this stuff, but particularly those work orders somehow in SmartSuite. But right now, just like many of you, I'm just using a piece of paper to keep track of what needs to be done. And I need a better way. Hypothetical established? Yeah? Okay, let's keep going. Part one, how to replace offline work orders with a streamlined digital work order ticketing system using SmartSuite. All right, so step one of building out our solution for digitizing our work orders is to find a spot to put them. Imagine that. So in this case, what we're going to do is open up our go to no code, easy to use work management software. In this case, we're talking about SmartSuite. If you have another tool you prefer to use, you can follow the same tutorial, but SmartSuite has a lot of features that will make this a lot easier. So that's what we're going to be using today. Inside SmartSuite, what I want you to do is go to wherever you currently organize your client work. Now, if you are not someone who's using SmartSuite yet, don't let this intimidate you. You can actually load a template into your account right here to follow along regardless. All you need to do is search for whatever your industry is, such as legal services, or podcasting or bug tracking or alumni tracking, you know, whatever it is that you do to generate value for your customers, you can probably find a solution template in SmartSuite for that. And even if you don't find one right here, which is hard to believe because there are so, so, so many, you can also have SmartSuite generate one for you using AI. Whichever way you slice it, however you want to have this area created, I just want you to go to your spot where you're going to choose to organize these work requests. In my demo account here, I have already set up a property management solution using the property management template that's built right into this template area. You can see more on this template in this other video, but I have this already set up and ready to go. Inside this solution, which is what this overall thing is called, I have quite a few different tables. That's what these tabs are. They used to be called apps, by the way, in case you've heard that phrase too. Each of these tables, formerly called apps, is essentially a database, a spreadsheet of information to allow me to organize something different about my property management business. In this case, I'm going to pretend that none of these areas perfectly work for what I want to do. So I'm going to create a brand new spot right here for work orders. To do that, if you're following along at home, just click the plus button, click start from scratch and give it a name of work orders. Once you do that, you're going to end up with a view that looks something like mine here. If you want to add the fun little icon like I do, you can add that right here. And now you have a spot to digitize those work orders. That is step one. If you're with me, check. Let's move on to the next step. Now for step two, take your form that you're already using that you already like, and we're going to figure out which pieces of it we need to take with us into this digital world. Because my business is imaginary, I'm just going to pick the first form that's on Google, and I'm going to use that as if that was my form. But for you, my friend, just grab the form that you're already using or look at the notepad from where you wrote your last notes and just try to observe what types of information you're writing down. You can follow this along, whether you have a printed form or just scratch pad notes, it all works. For me, I'm going to pretend that this form right here, the first Google search result is my uh, form. And what I'm going to do is start analyzing this form. I need a good place to get my thoughts out. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just open up a random record in SmartSuite, a little fun feature here. I'm actually going to open up a whiteboard. Here we go. I'm going to paste that image in from Google search results. So here I am. I've got this form on the whiteboard tool. You don't need to follow along this step. Just grab a piece of paper if you have it on you. Uh, we're going to review for two things in the second step. The first thing we're reviewing for is, is there anything we can kill? Anything we do not use on this form? I know for my family's business, they had certain fields that were on there, but were never referenced, were never filled in. If you have any of those fields as well, go ahead and start striking them through, crossing them out. In this case, on this work order request form, I'm going to assume that I'm probably not regularly filling in these two fields. Most forms, those aren't filled in very well. And let me just grab my pencil here. And I'm actually going to also remove some of these categories because maybe I don't use these. I really just use these center ones and maybe not even pest control, just those three main things. Uh, these other fields, maybe I just never use the best time for service. It might not be something we ever filled in. My goal here is just to get rid of anything I know is useless. No point in translating stuff that doesn't work. Once you have that and you crossed out anything that's junk, we're going to do a second check. In this case, we're going to look for any fields on our form or anything that you wrote on your scratch pad 
that already exists in SmartSuite. If you've never used SmartSuite before this video, I know what you're thinking. Layla, why would I have anything in SmartSuite? <laughs> you're fine. Skip this step if that's you. However, if you are somebody like my demo account right here, where you have other information already in your SmartSuite account, like my tenants and properties, you do want to do this step. So in my case, I want to look here at any information I have on my form that already exists in SmartSuite, and I'm just gonna circle it, preferably in a different color. This is gonna help us figure out how to put the information into SmartSuite later on. In this case, I know that the name field and probably the email already exist in my SmartSuite because I have a directory of the tenants who would be submitting those work orders. So these already exist. The location is also a field I already have because as you saw when I briefly went over to my other screen, I have a properties database in SmartSuite. So I have all my locations right here. No reason to retype them. I'm going to circle that as well. I think all the rest of these are unique. So at that point, I'm going to say good to go. Now that we finished step two, and we've started to figure out what on our form is duplicated, junk, or needs to come with us. We're ready for step three, where we actually put the fields into SmartSuite. Putting the fields into SmartSuite essentially gives us a spot to put the information that was previously on paper. In the same way that we have these boxes to fill in on this PDF or this printed piece of paper, we wanna create that same space for ourselves inside of SmartSuite. So let me show you what this looks like. I'm gonna close my whiteboard that I'm working on here, which by the way, is a really impressive feature of SmartSuite built right into their Smart Doc feature little nerdy detail. <laughs> let's move on and let's actually create some of these fields. To do this, I find it easiest to click new record and open up a visual because this to me looks the most like the document or the notepad I'm used to writing on. My goal here is to make what's on the left inside our smart suite area match what we have on the right, aka the form we're used to seeing. I'm going to ignore anything with a red X or red markings over it because I'm not going to bring that over. And I'm going to start by creating the fields that don't have any coloring. So things like request details here, the category field, this middle section doesn't have any colors, uh, the preferred completion date, the urgency. These one, two, three, four fields are what I'm going to create first. If you're starting from a blank slate like I have over here, you might notice that your fields don't perfectly line up with what's over on the right. That's okay. Every single thing that you see here, every single one of these little fill in the blank spots can be altered, renamed, or changed to make sure that it works. If you're brand new to SmartSuite or just like a brush up on how this whole field creation stuff works, you can watch the video up above or check out my How to SmartSuite training in the description below. It's actually a paid course, but it teaches you step by step through all the core features you need to know in order to be productive in SmartSuite and may really save you time, especially if you're in those early stages. But assuming you're comfortable creating fields, you're going to end up with something that looks like this. I've got my request name, my date, time, if I wanted that field, or I could just delete this one. I've got request details. I've got my category, which matches the category fields that are here. I've got my priority and a few extra fields as well. Those are going to be the fields that I'm bringing over from the request form. I'm just basically recreating it. Once you've created all these basic fields, these ones that didn't have any markings up on them previously, then let's move on to the ones that you've circled. So these ones, like the name and email and the location field for me, are ones that we want to treat in a, a special way inside a smart suite. Rather than forcing ourselves to type in the location for every single time we get um, a work order from a certain location or from a certain customer name, rather than retyping things, we're going to use a special field in SmartSuite called a linked record. Now, I already created one of these, but we're going to create another one together so you get some practice. You can see I have a field called location. This matches the location field I have over here on my form right here. This location field, though, is special. It has a special symbol, and it's called a linked record record. What this is doing is rather than me having to type in the, the location, I'm able to click this button and it shows me a list of locations that are already stored inside of SmartSuite. If I connect these, I've created a two-way connection between the location and the work order. If I click save here, I'll show you where that list came from. It came from over here. See these three properties? That's exactly what shows up in my drop-down list by creating a linked record. I'm connecting one database to another one. If you're familiar with Excel, this is a lot like having a data validation setting inside of Excel. If you're not that nerdy, just leave it to say it's basically like a lookup thing. OK, that's what's happening here. I already have one for the location field, but we also need one for the name and email. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to create linked record. I'm going to connect it this time to the tenants. 
going to look for that person here, tenants. There it is. I'm going to require an entry. I'm only going to allow one tenant to be connected to a request. I'm going to name this field name so it matches up here. And now I see if I click on this, I will have a drop down list of all of our different tenants. When I click on this, it automatically pulls in all of that customer information that I've stored elsewhere in SmartSuite. And all this stuff, I no longer need to retype a million times. It's just connecting things together. This can be a little confusing if it's the first time you've had exposure to these relational databases. So if you're like, what? You can check out this video up above where I spend the whole video just breaking down and explaining how to really make the most of these linked record fields. Once you add all of your fields in, my suggestion to you would be to drag them and rename them to make sure that they look as close as possible to the form that you are already comfortable using. The more familiar it feels, the easier it'll be for you to start using it because it'll really remind you of the tool you already are comfortable with. In this case, your piece of paper. And with that, we're ready for the second phase of our journey. Now that we have our beautiful work order ticketing system all organized and gorgeous and smart suite we're missing something aren't we yeah the people and the information <laughs> two little details my suggestion to you at this point would be to take this in two phases phase one of adding people and things into this would be to add information you have two ways of going about this i know lots of choices Option one, you take every work order you've ever done and put it inside this system. You can do that through the import feature in SmartSuite or by manually creating them one by one. I would probably choose the import feature if I were you. Now, if you're like my family's business where you have hundreds of orders each month, that may not be sustainable or something that's very easy to digitize. So in that case, I would go with option two and just pick a starting date. For example, June 1st. Everything after June 1st of this year will be inside SmartSuite, everything before June 1st will be in the old system. But whatever date you choose, be militant about it. As soon as you decide it, no half -sees. No flip-flopping around, no using both systems at the same time. Flip the switch, make it happen. That would be how I'd suggest going through this. Now, once you have your information and your work order starting to be in SmartSuite, my suggestion part two to you would be to get your users in here, particularly your office workers or your admins who are on a computer for at least a portion of their day or has access to a tablet. Those would be the people I'd focus on getting inside of SmartSuite first, because if you can just get this up on an iPad in the back of the warehouse, or you can make sure that this is the homepage for people when they log into their computers for the day, or you can make sure your field crew gets the mobile app on their phone. However you do it, getting users in here is really what's gonna make this come to life. Because unless people are actually referencing and updating this information regularly, it will very quickly become out of date. And we don't want that to happen. But anyway, I could and, and probably should at some point make a whole video just about how to get your team used to that new software. If you'd be interested in that video actually, just go ahead and write change in the comments below. That'll let me know that you're interested in a video on the change management process of switching software for a team. That could be really interesting if you guys are into it, but we don't have time for that today. We've got other steps to cover. So what do we do from here? We've got our users into SmartSuite. We've got work orders in there. We've got a place to put our digital stuff. We're starting to use it. Are we done? Well, you could be done here, but in my imaginary property management business, I've got another problem I wanna solve. Part two, how to use your ticketing system internally to track order details. You see, as we started to get people to use SmartSuite in this case, you're probably going to hear some pushback, like I will in my imaginary property management business of, gosh, SmartSuite, I love the mobile app. It's so easy to use, but gosh, I really hate having another app to keep track of. Because for many people on your team, they're not just using SmartSuite. They're using SmartSuite and, and Photoshop and your website platform and your job management platform and your tenant portal and your and, 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 and. They've got so many apps they're keeping track of and the idea of adding another feels really overwhelming. So if we really wanna solve the core problem of pen and paper work orders and not just digitize them, but take the whole process and bring it into the 21st century, we can add one other tool that will actually remove a lot of tools from our tech staff. Sounds a little confusing when you say it like that. I, I probably could have phrased that better. But what I'm talking about, of course, is the no code app builder software. So you see, software calls itself an app builder. And when I say that phrase to people, usually they greet me with a confused stare because those words don't mean things to normal people, but they call themselves an app builder. So let's try to translate app builder into English. Here is a page. Think of this page almost like an application you would have on your computer browser, right? A tab on your browser. This page contains information, it contains buttons, 
It contains doodads and designs. This is your page. This center thing, this tab in your browser, is your app. You can use this on your phone, on your computer, whatever. It's your app. But the magic of software is not just building out this app. It's that the information you see on this page is not just something that you have inside of software. Like you're not just sitting there and typing out all the information to show up on this page. Instead, the lists of information, the pictures, the buttons, they all can connect out to other places with software. So for example, maybe the list of properties that shows up on the main page of your software app will be the list of properties you have inside your SmartSuite account. The information is in SmartSuite, but it's also showing up in software with a two-way connection. So if it's edited here, it also gets edited here and vice versa. Similarly, you might have buttons in Softer. This button of click me might look like it's just happening inside of Softer, but when you click that button, it can actually do things elsewhere. If you choose to connect, for example, Stripe, you could click here and actually charge a payment, collect money, manage a subscription. This could connect to another tool in your tech stack. So here we have Stripe. Again, a two-way connection possible here. When you click the button in Softer, it makes something happen in Stripe. If you change that thing in Stripe, it'll change it in Softer, all connecting together. We can repeat this with just about everything that we're putting inside this Softer app. We can have images, text, permissions, user groups, user access. All of this stuff is happening in Softer, but it actually lives somewhere else. And Softer is connecting our Google Sheets, our Smart Suites, our Stripes, all this other stuff that's all over the place and would normally be 10 tabs in your browser. We're connecting into one custom made app that we're building just for our team or for our clients. Now, just like many apps you use, there's permissions built into this app as well. So even though all of this information is feeding in and all being put on this one page for you, you also have the ability to say, hey, if someone's an admin, show them this section. But if they're a client, only show them this section. Basically allowing you to bring all of this data into software, but change who can see, edit, use, delete, all that stuff based on the type of person who's viewing it. So it's this kind of customized experience based on the things that you choose to set up and 100% customized to how your business actually works. I've had a 0% success rate so far with people understanding what I mean by app builder when I just say it. So I'm hoping this visual will help you understand what we mean by no code app builder. But if it doesn't, don't worry, because we're going to go through how to do this in the next step. Now, Dragon successfully untangled, I hope we are ready to start exploring this no-code app builder, gosh, that just never gets easier to say, by logging into the tool. Use the affiliate link in the description below to sign up for your free account. Also support this channel at the same time, or just log in if you're already using it. Once you are in there, you're gonna see something like this. And what we wanna do is create a new app for what it is we're trying to build. So you can either choose to have AI generate for you what you're trying to build, or start from scratch like I'm going to. From here, you can choose the types of pages you wanna have in your application. For now, we'll just keep everything here. We can adjust all of this later on. And once we have this set up, we're gonna skip right over to the Users tab and mess around with User Groups. User Groups is where we can define what type of access do we wanna to give to our application we're building. As Softer warns us right here, these User Groups determine permissions and visibility, AKA what you can see and what you can do. For just about any team, there are gonna be two types of User Groups you're gonna to wanna to add from the start. The first user group is an admin and the second user group is going to be a general worker or in our case for a property management business it might be uh, people out in the field. So we might have office workers and field workers. Before you create your groups you're going to need to add some users into software so you can do that on your own time or watch this video up here where I go through that in more detail. But those are the two starting groups we're going to have in the user groups section. Now while we're here we can actually get a jump start on the next phase of our setup journey by setting up two additional groups. Part Three, how to allow customers to self-manage their work orders by using Softer as your client portal. We could define groups here in Softer for experiences for people outside of our organization as well. My suggestion would be to add a group for customers and potential customers as well. This will allow us to have one app in Softer that connects to all of our data, but allow the things people see and can do to differ based on these four different user groups that someone can be a part of. We can give people access to their Softer account by either adding a password when we create the user, choosing generate temporary password, or having Softer automatically create a magic link. This link is something we can share with people to allow them to log into their account with no hassle at all. 
All right, cool. We've got our user group set up. We basically have these pre-made pods of people who can see and do certain things. Now, what do we want them to see and do? That's what we're going to handle in step number seven. Step seven is about actually building out the app, the things people can interact with. Remember back to the doodle I had on the whiteboard where the things we build controls the data, not only that people see, but also what's in the other tools we use. While I've gone through in detail in previous videos, exactly how to click by click, go through and customize each of these areas. You can watch the video up here for the click by click. For this video, I thought I would just give you some examples of the pages we might build using the software features. First up, we might build some pages for our field technicians, maybe a page where they can view all of the different work requests that are assigned to them. This is going to be showing our smart suite information that the tasks we created in our smart suite area, but just showing the things that are assigned to that specific field rep who is signed into the software account. They'll just see their own work. They'll also be able to leave comments, add photos, and update these tasks as they finish the different work requests. This makes it really convenient for a field tech on the go to just open their phone, open up the software app, and see all of those work requests there. But Layla, if they have to open their phone, is it really that different than SmartSuite? Well, at that point, not hugely different. It's just a different way of looking at the same information. But the reason it becomes powerful is because we can add more things into software as well. For example, for our internal team members, perhaps Perhaps in addition to just viewing their tasks and their work requests, maybe we want to build out our software app for our users, our internal team members, to also include things like our policy handbook, our place where you can leave time off requests, our clock in and clock out tracker, all of the tools that our team members would typically be going to multiple spaces to manage. We could put them all and connect them all through software to be one tab or one app that people are actually working on. But of course, our field text is only one user group that we have, one type of problem we can solve. We can also flip the script and think about customers. We might want to build them an experience where they can submit, view, and manage their work requests. Unlike our field technicians, we may not want to allow people who are our customers to alter or edit these. Maybe we just want them to view and submit work requests. We have that ability to customize things within the permissions of software. Everything that's happening in software though, remember back to that whiteboard, it's connecting and updating the other tools we use. So it's updating in that case, our smart suite account. Another example on the customer side might be billing. An existing customer might be paying my property management company a fixed fee every month, but maybe their credit card changes. Normally they have to call me up. Oh gosh, go fix my, you know, the whole thing. Well, if I just build in a billing portal into software, my customer could actually log in and update their own billing information, check their card expiration, check their plan that they're on, all within software as well. So you see how we're not just solving the work request challenge anymore. We're truly building out a full end-to-end -end app for people interacting with our company, whether from the inside or the outside. Just because I can't help myself and giving more examples, another use case would be to think about our potential customers. If we felt so inclined, we could create some kind of public app that the general public can see that allows people to see what our services are, what our packages are, and allow people to submit a form that um, encourages people to become one of our customers, to purchase one of our subscriptions directly through software using the integration to Stripe. So people can actually pay and, and give us money and manage all of that billing stuff there. We could have that payment shoot off uh, information to Stripe to actually handle the billing. We could have it send off a receipt and put it in our Google Sheets. We can have so many different tools we use that are all connected to the internet, connected together via software by thinking creatively about different ways to solve bigger challenges our team is facing. And I should say all of the stuff I'm showing you here on the screen in softer, all of this stuff has the option to feed information to, to fill in the blanks, basically. So it doesn't just say tag one, tag two, tag three, but to actually say information from inside our smart suite account. That's how that connection works. I showcase that a lot more in this other video up here. So I'm not going to repeat it in this video here. Make sure you're not forgetting that detail, right? We're creating this website, but it's not a bunch of static information that we have to type in. No, we're making things look really pretty and softer, but the information is coming from somewhere else in this case, 
SmartSuite, or any other data source that you choose to set up. One of the beauties of a no-code app builder is that no code is required to build an app. It's just clicking. So if this sounds too good to be true, I promise you it isn't. Just use the affiliate link in the description and play around with this. And after about 10 minutes, I think you'll realize, wow, this is actually pretty easy and get as excited about it as I am. You can see me go through the exact building phase up in this video here, where I go through a bit more detail around the design and setup piece. Oh, just a quick pro tip. Earlier in this video, I mentioned that one of the questions my family members were asking was, how do I get SmartSuite in dark mode? At the time of recording, there's no built-in dark mode into SmartSuite, but using Softer, you can make that happen. All you have to do is show your SmartSuite data inside of Softer. Because remember, Softer is our connector. We can see all of our SmartSuite stuff through that interface. Because Softer is an interface that you can fully control, you could change those colors to make it as dark or as bright as you prefer, essentially becoming a creative workaround for having a SmartSuite dark mode, at least until SmartSuite actually builds one in. Just in case you're curious. So here we are, we are finally at step eight, the last one. What do you think it is? Well, yeah, it's it's giving people access to what you've built. Yep, most people will probably have access to SmartSuite if they're on your core team. But if we're trying to make Softer the center of our universe, the one app where we connect all of our other data to, like spokes on a wheel, we need to give people access to that. So if you are creating resources in Softer that are public to the internet, meaning you don't care what user group they are in, you're creating pages for everybody, you don't need to worry about this. Just share the link, people can see it. However, for things like, you know, what you just wanna share with field technicians or information you only wanna share with a specific customer, it makes sense to give users logins so your best customer can log in and see their work requests or your top technician can log in and see the org chart of the company. Whatever you want to share privately, you're going to want to share that access and make sure you do that in this step. So after eight steps, where are we? Well, we've taken our piece of paper where we are managing work orders and we've put it into a digital arena. We've digitized the work orders we already have and have told our team, hey, from this point on, we're using this new digital system. We added our team members into that digital system in SmartSuite, knowing that mostly our admins and computer users will be using it more often. Then, because we want to make life easier for everybody, not just people who work on a computer all day, we added one special ingredient, which is Softer, that works and integrates seamlessly with a two-way connection to SmartSuite to bring our data to life in our own custom-made app just for our business. And did I mention we did all of this for free on free plans? Yeah, technology today, kids, it's crazy. Overall, in these eight steps, we not only solve the problem of having physical work orders that could get coffee spilled on them and get lost forever, we also set ourselves up with the tools to solve so many future challenges about how we're going to collect testimonials, about how we're going to update people's billing information, about how we can solve other challenges our business is facing, which is something I really love. If we're going to change the tools you're using in your business, I want what you change to not just solve one problem, but many problems. And when we're talking about no code tools that allow you to customize things and tinker, which both SmartSuite and Softer do, you're really set up with the flexibility to solve any sort of problem and any sort of process that your business might be facing. That's why I suggest to small teams everywhere that if you're gonna pick one tool to really invest in and really learn, it would be your work management software. In this case, Smart Suite. What we talked about today is just one use case, and most businesses, even small businesses, have 50, 100, 200 processes. Imagine if we started systemizing all those other ones in the same way we did in this quick video, or <laughs> not so quick video. But anywho, as a quick reminder, you can find all of the links and resources I mentioned in this video in the description below. While you're down there, you might as well just click that like and subscribe button too, because you know good karma. You'll also find down there the affiliate links to the software that have sponsored this video and that you can use for free and you'll even get some bonuses if you use our links. So make sure you use them at no cost to you. It supports this channel. Don't forget to write the word change in the comments below if you'd like to see a part two video talking more about the change management process for setting up a new software for your team, whether they're tech savvy or technophobic. And no matter what's going on in your business right now or your life or how you're feeling today, just remember as I always remind you at the end of these videos, to enjoy the process, even when it's hard.